Greetings and welcome to week 5 class. Before jumping into this week's content, let's take a moment to review what we covered in week 4. Last week we looked at patient records in more detail and covered specific forms such as advanced directives. Our week then culminated with our midterm assessment. In week 5 we will explore the various numbering and filing systems as well as record storage and general circulation processes. Beginning with numbering systems, this category is made up of three specifically, serial, unit, and serial unit numbering systems. Let's explore these a bit more in depth. With a serial numbering system, a patient will receive a different medical record number for each visit. Example, Mr. Smith visits the physical therapy unit for treatment. Two months later, he is admitted due to a bout with pneumonia. Each of these visits will have a separate MRN. Unit numbering systems dictate that a patient remain with a single numeric identifier throughout all healthcare visits. The serial unit numbering system is somewhat of a marriage between the previously mentioned systems. Patients under this system will receive a new number each visit, but all other records are transferred to this current encounter. Now that we've covered the actual numbering systems, let's review the systematic approaches to filing these records. There are really only two main filing systems, alphabetic and numeric. Of all the concepts outlined in this course, these are probably the most straightforward at their core. Alphabetic filing systems utilize a patient's first name, initial, and last name to file records away. Numeric filing systems can be broken into three subcategories, straight filing, terminal digit filing, and middle digit filing. Leaning on the most basic way of defining these three systems, we can think of numeric filing as the use of a number to file a patient record. The difference here is that we lean on an assigned number rather than the name of the patient to file charts away. This is very common in your larger institutions, and I've personally experienced this system almost exclusively. Let's dig into the subcategories in a bit more detail. Straight numeric filing methods rely on strict adherence to chronological ordering from lowest to highest. Terminal digit filing systems, also known as reverse numeric filing, assign six digit plus patient numbers to records. These digits are then divided into different parts. These different parts assist in the storage and retrieval of records. Middle digit filing systems deploy a combined flavor of terminal digit filing in that we assign the middle digits as a primary, but the left and right values are the secondary and tertiary quadrants of this specific classification. Let's talk about the organization of patient records for a moment. Files are either centralized or decentralized in how they are stored. The concept of patient records being centralized simply means that they are stored in a central location for an entire organization. A decentralized concept essentially means that there are several areas where records are stored on a given day. Paper-based filing systems require a variety of equipment to adequately store records. A variety of considerations must be taken into account when selecting this equipment. This slide lists several different types of filing equipment that we'll dive into individually. As this first graphic shows, the open shelf file is a six to eight shelf unit that likely looks strikingly similar to a bookshelf that you or I might have in our own home. This piece of equipment houses two times the amount of files that a normal cabinet does, but it only takes up about 10% of the same space. A lateral file is a two to eight shelf unit that also has doors that are retractable. Next up is the movable file, and as you'd imagine with a name like this via manual or power options, a set of tracks allow these cabinets to be moved per need. A power filing machine is designed to allow for quick access to records without any physical change in posture or position. These files rotate inside a cabinet via power to bring the needed section into the view of the professional needing them. A vertical file looks exactly like a filing cabinet. They have locking mechanisms and can sometimes be stacked very high. The visible file is a system that allows a user to view a drawer's contents in an easy manner. With all of these in mind, it's important to note that different types of equipment require various types of folders. With file folders, color coding is the assignment of a specific color to patient numbers or document types for a variety of reasons. Think about all of the pages that are found within a chart or cabinet. The color assignment allows for easy identification of a specific type of file in a rapid manner. Color coding, of course, comes with variations, but this is generally the use case here. A fastener prevents records from turning into a chaos of mixed up documents. These individual documents are secured via adhesive strip, embedded, heat bonded, or docuclip fasteners. The file type will ultimately dictate the type of positioning of these fasteners on patient records. 
Pre-printed information is information on a chart that is already present, allowing a professional to easily fill it out. Allergies, current meds, etc. are some examples of this. Reinforcing a folder simply means providing additional stock to it. What I mean by this is that the folder isn't simply like another piece of paper. It is consciously made thicker, heavier, so that it is reinforced. Most files have rounded edges to prevent these folders from being crushed when placed back into storage. Scoring is placed on files to allow them to expand when more documents are added. Let's pause for a moment to talk about the access of files and organizational controls. Each organization must have a chargeout system that dictates the movement of records across their operations or service lines. These policies include who accesses the information, how long records are moved from storage, and how records are transferred. A chart tracking system facilitates access of a chart both planned and unplanned. These points of access typically come in the form of record requisitions. With IT becoming more commonplace in healthcare, requests can also be made in a more automated manner online. Periodic audits of file areas occur to ensure that all removed records are returned per standard operating procedures. The operational size obviously will dictate frequency, but it can usually be daily, weekly, monthly, or quarterly. There are multiple ways that records are physically transferred in a system that does not exclusively depend on electronic data capture mechanisms. A pneumatic tube transports records throughout a facility via a tunnel not unlike those used in bank drive throughs A dumbwaiter is literally a small elevator that transports records from one floor to another. A conveyor belt transports records that have been fastened to them from place to place. This is frankly sloppy, and it's not very common in the current healthcare landscape. Charts are also faxed to specific locations depending on need. You have satellite locations or clinics that rely heavily on this delivery mechanism. The specific catch here is that the fax mach machine receiving transmissions must be located in a secure area. Lastly, computers have completely changed the data access landscape when electronic health record systems have been implemented. Per security limitations, health professionals have access to information immediately should they have a need for it. The only limitations here are the credentials, privileges, and IT access required to access these charts.